everyone, it is Eric with Rockin' HTV session 129. Tonight we're continuing our lesson on building our Roadrunner sprayer trailer. Um, just gonna do some soldering and we may do some filing, but we're probably just gonna spend our time soldering, may even drill some axe holes. Hope to get that done, that'd be nice. And then we are going to begin uh, the finish work. We do need to put some ramps on it, we're gonna get that done as well. So we'll get that done here shortly. Um, got to introduce my helping hands this evening. For those of you at the pre-show, you got to see Miss Kara. Hi. Miss Kara has joined me in the lab tonight. She is the official mascot this evening. Let's give you a status report and tell you what's going on. Okay, number one, last week we put in all these stringers right here. Boom, 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 right? Okay, you remember that lesson. If you don't, go back and watch it. While you weren't looking, I put in all these stringers, plus I put in these back stringers here and then another piece here and I'll show you what that looks like on the one that I've already done okay so what I did when you weren't looking was I finished putting these in this in and then I put all these in which you can do because you're just replicating what you've done over here the thing we're gonna do tonight is put these stringers in and then this piece and that's where your sprayer is gonna run it's gonna drive over okay you wouldn't necessarily have to use this flat bar or this square tubing if you didn't want to you could use a piece of rectangular tubing and it would fit in here very nice and give you another bit of surface area for your sprayer to to drive over so uh, that would be entirely optional but no it is an option you could take some leftover rectangular tubing here and then lay it flat in between this stringer and that stringer right there okay no that's an option then what we'll need to do is make uh, something for ramps and then down here so our axle holes are the right height we take a piece of square tubing and solder it to the bottom of our our two mainframe pieces and that gets it to the right height to fit your DCP truck evenly okay so that's what we're gonna do so nothing real fancy I went ahead and set all this up earlier so we wouldn't waste time um, basically I've got one two three four five stringers going in here and you can see I've got everything set up just like I did last week um, I used a piece of brass here to hold it tight and then a magnet back far enough that it does not bug, uh, draw in the nuts that are using we're using to separate our to get the right distance on our stringers okay Okay, this distance here will be variable for everybody, okay? Even the amount of stringers going from here to here are going to be a bit variable. And the reason for that is, you know, I don't know where you're going to buy these if you use something like this. But if you use these, uh, they may very well be a different uh, thickness than what I'm using. So everything's going to be slightly different. So if, if you're a type A person that needs every rule or every variable answered um, this may not be the best project for you to start with because as you've probably guessed or seen thus far you, you do need to have a little bit of wiggle room in your attitude to make everything come together and um, most of you I think have that here okay so all I've done here is I've put my my long stringer here in place right I've got two hex nuts here to keep the gap and the distance uh, where I want it. And then I've used this piece of brass over here just to kind of hold it in place as I solder. Here we go. Okay, one other thing I did while you guys weren't looking was I went ahead and I put the kingpin in. Okay, the kingpin right here is just a nine penny nail okay that's all this is just a nine penny finish nail I cut to size and I'll show you why I use this here is a DCP fifth wheel plate look at that that nail works perfectly in there I've been using these for a long time so that's all I did here just drilled a hole and like I mentioned early on in this series 
I like my kingpin to sit a little farther up on the frame than some guys might like. Uh, it might be a little too close for some fellas, but um, this is just the way I like them to run. And then not all DCP trucks are built kind of like this one where the, where the air lines are so far back. Uh, for the trucks that I've been using this, these trailers on, this works really, really well, and that's what I like. So you are welcome to put your kingpin anywhere in here that you like, but uh, just know that this is, oh, I forget what I put that in, about an inch or three quarter inch back, uh, and then of course just centered it in here this way. Okay, nothing fancy here. Soldered it in, then took my uh, Dremel and then ground it smooth. That's it, nothing magical there. We're going to go ahead and put our two pieces in right here, one and two, and this will be, this will be for our axle holes. Okay, that looks like that's going to be happy. Oh, we're going to dig it. Okay. So we're going to set the first one, the rear one, and then we're going to set the... Set the front one. Go. This one we're going to have to shorten up some, without a doubt. Something tells me that axle. I may not have eyeballed that very well. Well, as it turns out, we're not going to put in the ramps tonight. We'll do that next week. Okay. Yep, yeah, somebody got them just a wee bit close, but that's not a problem. That's all fixable by any stretch. So, you can see here... Um, got them just a little close, just, uh, just a little off top. You can, okay, so here's a perfect example. If you make a mistake like I did and you get it too far back, okay, you're going along, make a mismeasurement, you make an accident, whatever, something screws up. All you can do, the, the simple way is you just come in here and solder that shut and then you drill a new hole wherever you want it or, or fix it up the best way you can. That's the that's the one thing nice about working with brass. We can clean all this up. We can hide mistakes. We can fix things that we break and do wrong. So that is a good example of that. If you haven't done it yet, you do need to get yourself a tank. And um, Ryan Betts here with Betts Family Farm, he uh, actually gave me his 3D, 3D printed tank. He says, uh, he thanked me for uh, the videos and stuff and gave me a tank. So. It is a really nice looking tank. I think he has his own printer. Um, I don't even know if I'll paint that. It looks nice the way it is. It's even got this cool little lid on it, which is kind of fun. Um, so do go ahead and uh, get your tank. You can buy them anywhere, but uh, uh, Ryan Betts here, he's a friend of the show and I appreciate the gift of the tank. So that will go up here. Also, if you're looking for some sort of covering for your decks, so we have one, two decks here, two different steps we need to cover. Um, you can, I, I forget where I bought this. I'm almost certain I bought this from DJ Harrison, Harrison Custom Minis. Years ago, I don't use it very often. I've just plum forgot who I bought it from, but I really like it. Um, you can also use HO scale tread plate, paint it black, and then you'd have a tread plate floor, which would look very cool as well. In addition, any equipment you want to put on your deck, it's a good time to purchase that so you'll have it in time for the finale. Okay. There you go, guys. It's 9.08. My daughter wants to watch the famous... What are we watching? Ah, The Greatest Showman. We're going to watch The Greatest Showman out here in the lab since it's spring break. So, what the heck, right? And finish our popcorn. And then I'll probably play around with some models because I can't sit still. 
With that, guys, thanks for watching. Appreciate you liking, commenting, and clicking. We will see you next week when we continue our build on the Roadrunner Sprayer trailer. It's a good day to be alive. Catch you later. Bye.